All right, so I've had this Pro Colored L1800 DTF A3 printer for over a year and stick around to see if it's still up and running. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Patrice. If this is your first time here, please be sure to hit the thumbs up. If this is your first time here, please look at the other content. And if you enjoy that content, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and also like the video. For my returning subscribers and members, hey y'all, welcome back. So y'all, time flies and I cannot believe that I've had this L1800 DTF printer from ProColored for over a year now. It's actually been about 13 to 14 months that I've had it. And recently I upgraded to the dual head Pro DTF printer from ProColored, but I still use my L1800 A3 printer. Today I am going to be explaining a few things in reference to the DTF process and also letting you all see the L1800 in a little action to see how DTF works. So if this is your first time hearing about DTF, DTF stands for direct to film and we will be printing directly onto a film, not a piece of paper. So when it prints out, the ink is a little wet. Now, you might have heard of the sublimation DTF hack, but this is actual DTF. The sublimation DTF hack is not actual DTF. This is actual DTF. We will be using DTF ink. That's one of the materials required for DTF printing. We will be using DTF film, and we will also be using adhesive powder to sprinkle onto the ink. And that's pretty much how DTF works. We're going to print directly onto a piece of film that is coated with a special powder already on top. And once that prints out, the ink will still be wet. You will then need to pour adhesive powder on top. And once you have the adhesive powder on top, you will then need to cure it into a DTF curing oven or under your heat press. I prefer my DTF curing oven. I find that it cures a lot better that way. However, those are the different steps for DTF printing. And you might say, oh, that's easy. I can do that. But let me let you all know that DTF printing is not for everyone. It's not for everyone. And it can be a little bit challenging, especially if you don't have much experience with printers and performing maintenance. And I'm not just talking about maintenance where you're pressing a button for maintenance so that you can do a print head cleaning. I'm talking about you're going to have to get up close and personal with your DTF printer. And it can sometimes be messy. However, when it's working beautifully, it is beautiful. And it is one of my favorite print methods when it's up and running because you can place that onto white shirts, black shirts, red shirts, green shirts, any color shirt you can apply DTF to. DTF can be applied to cotton and it can also be applied to polyester. And I, I love the DTF process. And so DTF also prints with a little bit of white ink. So the white ink is really what makes it pop off of the different color shirts. So if you're like, you know what, I'm just getting into this. I want to see how it works because it can be pretty expensive. It is an investment that you're going to be making into whether you're doing this for business or for your personal use. It is, it is an investment. And so before you jump in, I would suggest testing out a few DTF transfers. And you can get DTF transfers from companies like Heat Transfer Warehouse and also 143 Vinyl. In addition, there are other retailers and stores that sell DTF transfers online and all you have to do is upload your image. Now you do want your image to be very clear when you're uploading images to these sites. You want it to be at least a 300 DPI because if not, your your print will look, it won't look as expected. It'll be a little discolored. It will be kind of pixelated and you don't want that, right? So 
that the first part of DTF, is it for you or is it not for you? That's something that you need to decide. Check your budget. Make sure that you have the time to devote to actually doing DTF printing because sometimes it works beautifully and sometimes you may need a little bit of time. Now, the newer printers, I find they are a little more equipped for DTF printing and the printers are getting better and better. So the maintenance has reduced a little bit for some of the printers. However, you still need to know how to do maintenance when you need it because your inks can possibly clog and that's not good. And so when your inks clog, you will need to know how to troubleshoot that because a lot of times with DTF printing, the errors are usually user errors. And so you want to make sure that you get to know your printer so that it can print smoothly. All right. So we've already talked about your DTF transfers if you want to go that route to start out. Also, you need to assess your need. Does your, your business really need DTF printing? Do you have the clientele? for it. What printer are you going to get? So I have went through three different printers. I went through the Epson 8550, which I converted into DTF printing. And honestly, I would not suggest that for someone who does not have much experience with printers and just troubleshooting and providing the proper maintenance to it, because it is a little difficult getting to some of the parts of your print head with that printer and actually getting it unclogged when it gets clogged because it will get clogged. So that's my first printer that I had. The prints were beautiful with that Epson 8550 though. They were beautiful. Now moving into the other printers that I've had, I have the L1800 and now I have the Pro Colored Pro DTF printer and the newer printer I can get under that print head really good and some of the things you need for maintenance you will need a cotton swab and a long handle cotton swab these are not just your typical cotton swabs so this really helps you to be able to get underneath your print head also I usually use a little bit of alcohol this is 99 percent isopropyl alcohol or you can use some DTF cleaning solution all right and so if you're going to go away they do have a product like a paste product that you can put underneath your print head to help it to remain moist when you're going to go away okay so you can use that for both the L1800 and also the DTF Pro a dual head printer so we talked about a few of the materials already for DTF, of course you need a printer, you need DTF ink, you need film, you can get glossy film or you can get matte film. They also have glow in the dark film and what it does is, is that it applies a thin layer of a glow in the dark coating on top of the print and it will glow in the dark. They also have glitter film which again it, apl it applies a thin layer of either fine glitter, sometimes they have a little bit chunkier glitter, it's not really chunky but a little bit of chunkier glitter on top of your print so that when you press it it will have a glitter finish to it. In addition you have your adhesive powders and those powders come in fine, medium, coarse. There's so many different types of powders and you will need, just need to find the type of powder that you are interested in. I've already showed you guys some of the maintenance supplies that you will need for making sure that that printer is up and running. I perform a print head cleaning at least once daily on all of my DTF printers just to make sure that everything is flowing smoothly, especially when I'm not going to be printing on them for a while. Now when I go on vacation or I have a business trip, I generally have to run two or three print head cleanings once I get back to make sure everything is printing correctly because sometimes it's super, super easy for it to clog up. But with the L1800 and the dual head, the Pro Dual Head, there is a SIS system connected to the printers which stirs up the ink to help prevent any major clogs. Okay, so that's very, very important to know. If you're converting a printer like an 8550, you want to make sure that you also have a SIS system connected to the printer to keep that ink circulated. That really helps with reducing 
the clogging and um both the l1800 and the pro printer there is a temperature control system connected to the printers now the one thing that i didn't realize with my printers was that y'all the waste tank is so messy so with the 8550 i made my own waste tank because you're going to waste a lot of ink especially when you're doing the print head cleanings however with the waste tanks attached to the L1800 and the Pro Printer, there are no sensors to let you know that your waste tank is full. So you're going to have to monitor your waste tanks, and it's just a waste tank that you can literally take off and dump out the ink, but you're going to have to monitor the waste tanks because they can fill up and you don't want them overflowing and so you will have to monitor it most printers your printer lets you know you know when the waste tank is filled up and you need to replace it but this does not these printers do not let you know that and lastly it may not really be lastly but lastly with DTF printing most DTF printers require you to have a PC so it doesn't usually work well with a MacBook. And why is that? It has really nothing to do with the computer or the printer. It's more so to do with the RIP software that you need to actually print out your designs. So we're actually going to go into printing out a little bit. You guys will see the different programs that I use for printing my DTF print. I do start in a design software and then I upload it into the RIP software so that we can print it out. These softwares are important because with your regular computer and also these printers, they're not originally set up to print white. And so the RIP software adjusts and changes uh, the printer and also your software and allows you to be able to print the white. Now, some printers come with RIP softwares. All of my pro colored printers came with RIP softwares, but if you are converting a printer yourself, you will have to pay additional for the RIP software. Okay, so RIP software, I, I've paid the most with Catlink. I believe it was $400 for Catlink. And usually with the RIP softwares, you are only able to add one printer to the software. All right. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Would I stop DTF? I absolutely love DTF. It's super convenient. Um, when you make a mistake, that's when it's when you can get a headache. When you don't perform maintenance on your printers, that's when it becomes another headache or at least proper maintenance, that's when you know you might wanna give up, but don't give up, keep going, it does get better. I can say that from when I first started DTF almost two years ago with the Epson 8550, I am absolutely loving it now. Before I was interested in it, I wanted to, to see if I could make it work with that printer, and I made it work for nearly a year with that printer until I moved on to the L1800, and now I'm using the Pro the pro printer but today because I've had the L1800 for a year we are about to see the different steps that I take to actually get a quality print All right so let's head over to our software and then we're gonna print out a few things with DTF if you're not purchasing a design you will need to have a separate design software in order to create the designs that you want to create I usually use Adobe Illustrator when I am creating new designs for myself or for my customers. This is just basic. I'm putting these names on the back of shirts. Once you're done with your design, you want to save it as a PNG. So I am just going to head up to file. I'm going to export this as a PNG file. Now that I exported this as a PNG, I need to upload this into the RIP software. Okay, so now we're inside of the RIP software and I'm going to upload it into the RIP software. Now, RIP software is mostly work onto PCs and not really onto Apple products or MacBooks. So I use a PC to print out all of my designs. And here is the file. 
So now the new image is imported into the RIP software and I already have my page size set and I am just going to make it a little bit larger. You don't have to, once you set it and save it as a PNG, that size is how it will be uploaded into your RIP software. You just wanna make sure that you have your page set and inside of the RIP software, you always wanna make sure that you mirror your design. And so I'm gonna go ahead and mirror my design. And then in layout, this is where you'll tell it the paper size that you'll be printing on. So today I'm printing on a 13 by 19 sheet of paper or film. It's not really paper, it's a film. And it's letting me know the measurements. And right now it's just measuring the entire design. And after we're done with that, I always like to make sure I check my color and I'm checking my color. Your ink channel will show you your ink layout in your printer. You always want to make sure that that is correct. This is the ink limit that I will be using today, 45. I want 100% white on there. I am going to be pressing these onto black shirts. So I want it to really, really stand out. And we're pretty much ready to go. Under white, you want to make sure that you have white under any colored pixel. If you want white to cover that background, then you want to make sure it's under any colored pixel. If you click the drop down, you'll see different options. You don't really want fill area because it will fill the entire background white and even parts that you want to be transparent. That's another important part. Make sure when you're saving your PNG, make sure that you save it with a transparent background. Now I'm ready to print, so I'm just going to head to the printer option, and we're going to select print. Under print, you want to make sure that you print the color first, and then you want white plus color. It's important to have both of these checked off if you're making a shirt and you want a white background or white overlay on top of your colored ink. So you want both of these checked off. Everything else for me looks pretty good, and I'm happy with it, so now we're ready to print. All right, guys, so it's going to get ready to print. And one thing with your printer, you want to make sure that you have your paper properly placed inside of the feed. You want to make sure that it is placed right here. That will prevent any paper jams that you might have when printing with this particular printer and other printers. Like that paper needs to be in there correctly. So as you see, it's right there underneath those tabs, and that's how it will be able to roll correctly. Whenever I make sure that, I don't have many paper jams, actually. I rarely have a paper jam. If I do have a paper jam, it will be because it's not in there correctly. And you don't want to put too many sheets of paper in at one time. I have too many sheets of paper here. But you don't want to put too many papers in at one time because they will come out together but for the most part I haven't had any major issues when that happens and this is what you want to see when you are printing you want to make sure that you have a nice layer of white ink on the back especially when you're printing for dark clothes if you notice the extra sheets coming out with it really aren't causing it any issues Another thing that I need to note is this particular printer is not wireless and with a lot of the DTF printers you actually have to have your computer connected to the printer. That's why my computer is very close to this. I kind of use this one solely for working with my RIP softwares and the printers that require RIP softwares.
After it's done printing, your print is going to be wet. You want to make sure that you apply your adhesive powder to it fairly soon after it is done printing. Now you want to make sure every part of the image is coated with this adhesive powder, which is going to kind of marbleize into the adhesive that's going to be able to stick on your shirt. One thing that I did not mention is safety measures to follow when doing DTF. Up until now, everything that we've done is perfectly fine. However, when handling this powder, it is suggested that you wear gloves and also wear a respiratory mask. If you have any respiratory medical concerns or you just want to be preventive, I would definitely recommend getting a respiratory mask and wearing gloves when handling the adhesive powder. In addition, you will smell a little bit of that adhesive powder when it's inside of the curing oven. And so with the curing oven, there are air filters and things like that that I would also recommend looking into just to prevent anything from happening or any health concerns arising. Now that we are done powdering, it's time for us to cure it. And today we're using this DTF curing oven, also from Pro Colored. My temperature is set to about 130 degrees, and we will be baking this or curing it for about two minutes. You want to make sure that it has a kind of marbleized look, like an orange peel or alligator skin. All right, guys, so we are all done curing our print, and you want to make sure that it's cured correctly. And right now, this is perfect. I have that texture that I want on the back. You don't want any of that powder still left on the back. You want it to have a glossy look. And as you see, it looks kind of like an orange peel or alligator skin. So everything is good to go. We're ready to press. Now we're under the heat press and I'm going to of course lint roll first because you are going to be pressing the transfer on top. So you want to make sure you get anything on that shirt that's on there off. So we're going to lint roll and pre-press the shirt just to get some of that moisture out, which I forgot to <laughs> pre-press the shirt, but definitely make sure that you pre-press your shirts. I didn't really pre-press it because the other side does have another uh, image on it, so it was okay. But I pressed this at 325 degrees for 25 seconds, and this film is a cold peel. So you want to make sure that you know your films whether it's a cold peel or a hot peel there are some shirts or some peels that are cold and hot peels so you just want to make sure that you know the proper peel for your shirts just as you would with HTV all right so I'm going to go ahead and place the other name on top and here I'm just showing you guys the whole process of what I'm doing I do have a piece of parchment paper on the bottom of my heat press because I do have the other image on the other side. And I just like to protect the heat press and also the shirt when I'm doing it. All right, so now it's time for us to peel the film. I let it cool off and it's very cool. And so we're going to peel it. And when you peel it, the first peel, you're going to get a very smooth finish on your on your transfer it's very very smooth and what I want to do is I'm going to press this a second time so that that transfer can really gel with the shirt and it's going to actually press so hard into the shirt that it's going to take on the appearance of the actual fiber of the shirt that's underneath the transfer all right so I'm going to do this with all the shirts I have quite a few of these shirts that I need to do but if you look you can see the fibers of the shirt and that's what you want now it's still on top of the shirt but you want to see the fibers you see the difference between that particular press I didn't press it a second time and this is the first one that I pressed twice and I absolutely love it. You do need parchment paper. I forgot to mention that, but you need parchment paper for those second presses. All right, so that's it. All right, y'all. So we're all done and that's pretty much all that I have to say about DTF. I do want to make sure that I let you all know that you need to check the width of the printers that you're going to be purchasing to make sure that it's going to print out as wide as you want it to be. I see DTF printers printing as little as 8.3 inches wide and some can print 24 inches, 48. There's some huge printers out there. And so the printers that I have, of course, are convenient for home printing and they really don't take up that much space. However, the Pro printer that I have does take up quite a bit of space and I actually 
use the shaker and curing oven combo. What you guys saw in the video is what I usually use with the L1800. Now that L1800 does have a roller that can go with it where you can use the roll of film as opposed to using the single sheets of film. But just know that you're going to have to practice with DTF and you're going to have to put in some work before you perfect DTF. And it does require a lot of patience. It does require a lot of your time and it does require maintenance. But I must tell you that it can absolutely be done. I've seen a lot of people get into DTF and they're blaming the printers and they're blaming everything else. And while sometimes you may get a defective printer and sometimes the issue might be the printer, but majority of the time the issues are user problems and figuring out how to actually use the printer, how to prevent clogs. You have to really be proactive with DTF printing, right? So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I will have links listed below to everything that I talked about today, everything that I used. If you have found this video helpful, please be sure to click the subscribe button. I would love it if you would stick around. Also, head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join the Craftable Things communities there as well. But that is it, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.